Gospel according to John, the 20th chapter, beginning with the 20th verse. Glory to you, O Lord. There were some Greeks in town who had come, for, come to worship at the feast. They approached Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee. Sir, we want to see Jesus. Can you help us? Philip went and told Andrew, and Andrew and Philip together told Jesus. Jesus answered, Time's up. The time has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Listen carefully. Unless a grain of wheat is buried in the ground, dead to the world, it, it will never be any more than a grain of wheat. But if it is buried, it sprouts and reproduces itself many times over. In the same way, anyone who holds on to life just as it is destroys that life. But if you let it go, reckless in your love, you'll have it forever, real and eternal. If any of you wants to serve me, then follow me. Then you'll be where I am, ready to serve at a moment's notice. The Father will honor and reward anyone who serves me. Right now I am shaken. And what am I going to say? Father, get me out of this? No, this is why I came in the first place. I'll say, Father, put your glory on display. And a voice came out of the sky saying, I have glorified it, and I'll glorify it again. The listening crowd said, It's thunder. Others said, an angel spoke to him. Jesus said, The voice didn't come for me, but for you. At this moment, the world is in crisis. Now Satan, the ruler of this world, will, will be thrown out. And I, as I am lifted from the earth, will attract everyone to me and gather them around me. He put, this, put it this way to show how he was going to be put to death. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Dear friends in Christ, grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. All right. Well, there's a, there's a word that's not exactly in each one of the lessons for today, but it does at least cross over into three, even if it's just referred to, perhaps. And that word is covenant. Now, if you happen to be a video game fan, I'm not talking about the covenant from Halo. I'm talking about a whole nother covenant. But... I'm not entirely sure what a covenant is. I mean, I have a pretty good guess. I hear it all the time. I could probably figure out what it is. But I figured, how about like, who wants to be a millionaire? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull the audience and figure out what on earth a covenant is. I mean, I could ask you right now, what is a covenant? Somebody might say, oh, promise. Yeah, I, I'd laugh too. Yes, they might be laughing. might be a promise. Who knows? It might be silence because you're just like, well, I don't know what a covenant is either. Or you're saying, oh, I know what a covenant is, but I'm not going to tell you today. What is a covenant? So I asked you in a way that usually I get a response. It's a relationship, an unbreakable promise, an agreement, a vow, a promise. It maybe has something to do with nuns. It is vow. It's an agreement. It's a promise. It's definitely a promise. And it's Indiana Jones. Now, whoever wrote Indiana Jones, you're going to get me on a tangent because I really like Raiders of the Lost Ark, and I could stand up here and just do the whole movie and talk about that, and that makes a lot of sense. I know how that ends. Make sure you keep your eyes shut when they open the ark. That's all I'm going to say about that. But that's, that's here nor there. We're talking about a covenant. A covenant, and with all those words, I, I thought, wow, there's got to be another word that maybe we can relate to in this world. We don't really say covenant as often as we could. How about a promissory note? Anybody know what a promissory note is? Yeah, let's see a show of hands. Promissory notes. We're getting into legal terms this morning. This will be fun. All right, promissory note. What exactly happens? Well, a lot of times you sign that when you take out a loan. In my case, I remember very much, even not knowing much, when I signed that student loan, the very words that popped out were, guess what? You will pay this back. This isn't for free. Have fun at college. Oh, thanks. But not only that, maybe it's on a lease. I promise to do this. I'm going to give you this much money a month, and you're going to give me this in return, and we're going to live together. Or when you get that car, oh man, I wish I had that kind of money right now, but let's see, 20 years, we can do that, and then the car will be mine. One way or another, you sign the dotted line, you're ready to go. But that's the fun part. The fun part is taking it and signing. It's a good thing this is actually not a real covenant. I'm signing my name, 
Ah, there we go. We're good to go. But what happens when you get to that clause that says, if I forget to pay or don't pay? Oh, boy. What happens when the covenant, when that promise, when that loan note, that lease is all of a sudden broken? Well, you could be in big trouble. All of a sudden, they may come and say, we want it all right now. Every single dollar of that student loan, we would like back right now. And if you can't do it, we're going to find a way to get it from you right now. We may take you to court. We may find a way to garnish your wages. We may start taking your stuff. We may all of a sudden damage your credit, so you're not going to take a loan out for a long time. We may even come and repossess that beautiful car that you thought was going to be paid off in 20 years. And if you're in a renting situation, we might even change the locks on you, and you're going to be out of luck because you broke the, this note, this covenant, this lease. And when we think about it in today's terms, oh great, we understand that there's a lot of consequences going on when we sign one of those things. But maybe we don't stop for a moment and think about the covenant we make with God or the promises we make to God. What happens when we break those? Have you ever broken a promise to God? And if you don't raise your hand, I know you're lying to me today. <laughs> Have we ever done it? You better believe it. We have. We've broken that covenant. We've read the terms of service. We've done it all, and we've broken it at some point or another. Whether it's on purpose, whether it's accidentally, whether it's just being lackadaisical and saying, ah, I think we're good for right now. I'll, I'll, I'll take it from here. I, I love what's going on in my life, so I'm going to do everything I can to save myself. Thank you for that great covenant, but I'm just going to, I'm not going to pay attention to it anymore. But when we break it, there are consequences, aren't there? You don't have to go much further than the very beginning of the Bible to Genesis. Hey, look, you got this beautiful garden here. You can have it all. You got the animals. You got the food. Just don't touch that tree. Do not touch that tree. Okay, I'm going to touch the tree. And as soon as the tree was touched, what is the consequence that comes in? Well, we're very aware of sin and death. We're very aware that something's going to happen. There are consequences. When Moses and, G and God lead the people out of Egypt, yes, we're out of it. But at the first sign of trouble, okay, we're going to go and break the co this covenant and we're going to go worship something else because it's the flavor of the month. But it keeps happening over and over and over again, this breaking of this covenant. Even when the terms are ch changed and they get extended out, it feels like you owe more and more and more that you'll never be able to pay back which can leave us stuck in shame because we did it again. Leave us in doubt that why, why, what's the big deal here? I can't do anything about that. Maybe fear, great, I'm going to go to hell. I deserve that more than anything. And we know that about covenants. We know there are real world consequences. But so did God. God knew that too. In Jeremiah, he even points out, I'm going to make a new covenant, but not like the one I made with the ancestors when I took them from by the hand in Egypt. Because they broke it. It just is like a broken record. How on earth can we do anything when they keep breaking these covenants? And it happens all the time. But in knowing that, God makes a brand new covenant. A brand new one in which God is glorified each and every time. You look at it, think about it, read it. And it's crazy. It is a crazy covenant that doesn't make any sense because in the world that we live in, we know what happens when we break a covenant. There are dire consequences. Your life is going to be changed forever, usually for the negative. But this new covenant just doesn't gel with our understanding. It doesn't make sense because why would somebody in their right mind, when you break that covenant, when you go right before the judgment and see it and are in crisis, and they say, yeah, you did broke it, somebody else comes by and says, I'll take that note from you. I'm taking this loan, and I'm going to pay it in full, forgive it, and you know what? It is mine. I'm going to take it upon themselves. Don't worry about them anymore. Who would do that? How many times have you ever seen that in this world? Somebody actually doing that. 
a new covenant for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. That's why these lovely things are out here today. A reminder to us each, each time we see it, and even if we don't see it, I bet those words stirred in our hearts, I know what that is saying. There is a new covenant in my blood, my body broken for you, shed for you, and for all people. So take that old covenant and set it right there. This new covenant is unchanging, it's unbreakable, and I'm going to take your defaults, your, everything about you, upon myself your past, your present, and your future. And I will be glorified in doing it. Now is the time. Time is up and the time has come for the Son of Man to be glorified, for this new covenant to take effect. It's here. Take it all. I will do it. And in that new covenant, we lose our life. Even if we love it, we lose it. We let it go by calling out to the Lord, either verbally, unverbally, consciously, subconsciously, Lord, have mercy, even if it takes to our last days. Lord, have mercy on me. I can't pay this. I have defaulted on it. What am I to do, Lord? Have mercy on me. And in those words, God is glorified each and every time by saying, I'll take that. I will take it. I've got it from here. And God never stops doing that. God never stops. God doesn't forget. He knows what you've done, but he forgives. And he transfers that debt away from those who would control you for all time in a negative sense. Like Satan, who is thrown out when God is glorified. I'll take that. No, I will take that. And them, they are as pure and white as snow. We cry out very often, Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love, according to your abundant mercy. Blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity. Cleanse me from my sin, for I know what I've done. I know my sin is ever before me. Against you and you alone I've sinned and done what's evil in your sight, so that you are justified in your sentence and blameless when you pass that judgment. I was born guilty, a sinner when my mother even conceived me. But instead we hear these words when that loan is taken away. My word never fails, and the promise rests on this grace, and by the saving love of me, Jesus Christ, the wisdom, the power of God, your sins are forgiven, and God remembers them no more. You are indeed now purged as white as snow, a new clean heart in which you, you have a joy restored into your soul, a restored spirit. And it can sound like a broken record, but it's something we need to hear again and again and again. And when I think of it in a legal text that we all understand today, because maybe we've been there, maybe we somebody has defaulted on a loan before, and somebody's been been a calling and your life has changed. Imagine the joy you would feel having somebody swoop in and take it upon themselves. Hear that over and over and over. You are forgiven. This is now mine. I love you now and always. Thanks be to God for that each and every day. Amen.